This is lesson 4.4, proving triangles congruent, side, 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 and side, angle, side. In addition to being able to show triangles are congruent with all three pairs of sides and all three pairs of angles, you can take some shortcuts. If you know the three pairs of sides are congruent, that's enough to say that the triangles are congruent, and that rule is called the SSS postulate. How do you get all angles and sides congruent? Well, you're not always given all the information you need, but there are things to look for to get the extra pieces. Pause the video and jot this chart down because it will be extremely useful for getting the other pieces. It tells you what to look for, it tells you the statement you will make in the proof, and it tells you the reason for making that statement. If the triangles share a side, make that side congruent to itself with the reflexive property. If there's a midpoint, then make the half segment congruent to the other half segment with the midpoint theorem. If there's a segment bisector, make the half segment congruent to the other half segment. That's the definition of a segment bisector. If you have vertical angles, then make the angles congruent because vertical angles are congruent. If you have an angle bisector, Make the half angle congruent to the other half angle because of the definition of an angle bisector. Sometimes you have parallel lines with alternate interior angles. We'll make those congruent because alternate interior angles are congruent. And sometimes they even share an angle. Well, make that angle congruent to itself because of the reflexive property. Another thing to keep in mind is that if the proof says to prove triangles congruent, then prove them congruent, and your final answer will be whether you're using SSS, SAS, ASA, or AAS. However, if it says to prove segments congruent or to prove angles congruent, prove the triangles congruent first, and then say that those parts are congruent because of CPCTC, which says corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Always pay attention to your goal. Do you need to show the triangles are congruent, or do you need to take it one step further and say that the corresponding parts are congruent? So let's do a proof. Number two, given segment RS is congruent to segment UT and segment RT is congruent to segment US, prove that triangle RST is congruent to triangle UTS. Well, as always, start with what you're given. Segment RS is congruent to segment UT, and segment RT is congruent to segment US. And the reason we know that's true is because it was given to us. That's two pairs of sides. Since I'm thinking about the SSS postulate, I need to find out how to get that third pair of sides. So here's where you want to look at your chart. So what on this list do you see that's happening with our picture? And it's the shared side. So in the proof we'll say that the side is congruent to itself with the reflexive property. So segment TS is congruent to segment TS because of the reflexive property. You can mark that in the picture. And now we have all three pairs of sides. And since we have all three pairs of sides congruent, then the triangles are congruent. Write it just the way it says. Triangle RST is congruent to triangle UTS. Why? because all three pairs of sides are congruent, and that's SSS. So anytime you're proving triangles congruent, use what you're given, and then use that chart for all the other pieces that you might be able to figure out, like the shared sides or the midpoints or any other ways to do that. Once you've got all the pieces, say the triangles are congruent. 
Another way to show that two triangles are congruent is the side angle side postulate, or SAS. If two triangles have two pairs of congruent sides and the angle between them, then they're congruent. Please make sure that the angle that you use is the angle between the two sides, just like it's written, SAS. A is between the two S's, and the angle you use has to be between the two sides. Number two, given the measure of segment AB equals the measure of segment CD, and segment AB is parallel to segment CD, prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle CAB. As always, start with the given information, and the reason is given. Now I need to find the pairs of congruent segments and the pairs of congruent angles. If the measure of segment AB equals the measure of segment CD, then segment AB has to be congruent to segment CD because of the definition of congruent segments. Now I have one pair of congruent sides. So if you look at the chart you made earlier, what are some other pieces of information that we can get from this picture? Well, the two triangles share segment AD. So let's make that segment congruent to itself. Segment AD is congruent to segment AD. And that's the reflexive property. So now we have two pairs of congruent sides. What else do we know? Well, we know that segment AB is parallel to segment CD, and when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, we have alternate interior angles that are congruent. So let's make those angles congruent to each other to get us an angle pair. Angle BAD is congruent to angle ADC. Why? Because alternate interior angles are congruent. Well, if you look, I have enough pieces of information now. I have a pair of sides, a pair of angles, and a pair of sides. Notice the angle is between the sides. And that's enough to say that the triangles are congruent. Write it the same way that they ask you to. Triangle ACD is congruent to triangle CAB. Why is that? Side angle side. So you had a pair of sides that were congruent because you were given their measures are equal. You had a pair of sides that the triangles shared, so you could use the reflexive property there. And you had parallel lines cut by a transversal with congruent alternate interior angles. That's enough to show that the triangles are congruent by side angle side. So when you're trying to prove triangles congruent, use the information they give you. And if you need any extra pairs of sides or angles, look for other things they might not say, like the sides that they share are congruent, vertical angles are congruent, Alternate interior angles are congruent. A midpoint will cut a segment into two congruent segments. A bisector will cut something into two congruent halves. Look for all of those extra things to get the pieces you need to say that the triangles are congruent. This is lesson 4.5, Proving Triangles Congruent, ASA, AAS. Your objectives are to use the ASA postulate to test congruence and to use the AAS theorem to test for congruence. These proofs are done the same way that the proofs with side, 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 and side, angle, side were done, with just a different order. ASA is when you have two angles and the sides in between them, and AAS is when you have two angles and the very next side. So if you have two triangles with one pair of angles, 
the very next pair of sides and the very next pair of angles, that's angle side angle. The side is between the two angles. Those triangles are congruent. If you have two triangles where you have one pair of angles, the very next pair of angles, and the next pair of sides, that's angle, angle side. And those triangles are congruent. You can use this as a guide. When you're doing congruent triangle proofs, the first thing you always say is what's given. The second thing to do is to find the other pairs of congruent parts. The other side pairs and the other angle pairs. This is where you will use the chart that you made. Are, are there any shared sides? Are there any angle bisectors that make two congruent angles? Are there vertical angles that are congruent? Are there parallel lines with alternate interior angles? Are there any midpoints that cut a segment in two? That's where you do those pieces. Get all the remaining side pairs and angle pairs that are congruent. Step three is to say that the triangles are congruent once you have enough pieces of information. And you'll use SSS, SAS, ASA, or AAS. Finally, if they ask you for proving parts congruent instead of triangles congruent, then you'll need to do step four. And you will say that the other parts are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So if they want you to prove triangles congruent, you'll stop at step three. But if you're proving parts congruent, go on to step four. Number one, write a two-column proof. Given angle S is congruent to angle V and T is the midpoint of segment SV, prove that triangle RTS is congruent to triangle UTV. Well, as always, start with what you're given. Angle S is congruent to angle V and T is the midpoint of segment SV. The reason that's true is because we were given that information. That gives us one pair of angles. Is that pair of angles enough to say that the triangles are congruent? No, it's not. So let's look for other things now, the other parts that are congruent. So here's where you look for things like shared sides, which they don't have, or segment bisectors, which they don't have, or midpoints, which they do have. T is the midpoint of segment SV. So let's use that. If it's the midpoint of segment SV, then segment SV is cut in half. And those two halves are segment ST, which is congruent to segment TV. That's true because of the midpoint theorem. That's one pair of angles now and one pair of sides. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? No, it's not. So let's keep looking. Are there parallel lines with alternate interior angles? No. Are there vertical angles? Yes. Angle RTS is congruent to angle VTU. Anytime you have vertical angles, use them. Why are they congruent? Because vertical angles are congruent. So that gives us a pair of angles, a pair of sides, and a pair of angles. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? Yes, it is. So triangle RTS is congruent to triangle UTV. Why? Because of angle side angle. You have an angle, the very next side, and the very next angle. That's angle side angle, so the triangles are congruent. So remember, Start with what you're given, then find the other pairs of congruent parts, looking for shared sides or vertical angles or midpoints or alternate interior angles. Once you have enough pieces to say the triangles are congruent, say that they're congruent.
The final way to show that triangles are congruent is angle, angle, side. We showed you an example of that a little while ago. Now let's do a proof that uses angle, angle, side. It's two angles and the very next side. It's not the side between the angles. Instead, it's the next side. Write a two-column proof. Given that segment BC is parallel to segment EF, the measure of segment AB equals the measure of segment ED, and angle C is congruent to angle F, prove that the triangles are congruent. Step one is always start with what you're given. And that's true because we were given that information. Now, so far we have one pair of angles congruent. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? No, it's not. Now, since they gave us that the measure of segment AB equals the measure of segments ED, then we can also say that segment AB is congruent to segment ED because of the definition of congruent segments. Any time they say that measures are equal, go ahead and change it to saying that the segments are congruent by the definition of congruent segments. So now we have a pair of angles and a pair of sides. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? No, it's not. So what else do we know? There's not any shared sides, no midpoints, but they do give us parallel segments. If segment BC is parallel to segment EF, that gives us two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, special angle pairs are congruent. In this case, I don't have alternate interior angles, but I do have corresponding angles. So I can say that angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF because corresponding angles are congruent when the lines are parallel. Now I have a pair of angles, the next pair of angles, and the very next pair of sides. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? Yes, it is. Now, they made a typo, so change the prove statement to say triangle ABC instead of triangle ABD. So you can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because of angle angle side. So we started with what we were given. That gave us one pair of angles. Then we used the guide and other clues to find the other pairs of congruent parts. Segment AB is congruent to segment ED and the pair of corresponding angles. That gave us angle-angle side. So we were able to say then that the triangles were congruent. So anytime you're proving triangles congruent, start with what you're given. Then mark the other parts congruent. Use that chart to help you as a guide. Are there any shared sides that are congruent to themselves? Any vertical angles that are congruent? Any alternate interior angles that are congruent? Get all of those remaining parts that give you enough information to say the triangles are congruent. Once you have that, go ahead and say the triangles are congruent with SSS, SAS, ASA, or AAS. If they wanted you to prove the triangles congruent, then you can stop there. But if they instead wanted you to prove parts congruent, take it one step further and say that those parts are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. 